Hello everyone, this is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio and Melanie B's Creative Supplies. And today I am so excited to bring you another company. When one of my Patreon members, Julie Tannehill, had reached out to the owners of Ledge Bay and I told them about my videos, the CEO, Ken, emailed me and asked me if I'd be willing to sample a couple of their kits. And I was like, absolutely. I had heard such amazing things I would be super happy to do that. He sent me this one and one other, which I am planning to bring you in another video. I'm happy to say that it is a 12 by 16. And the reason I'm not bringing it to you today is because I chose a winter theme. It is gorgeous. And by the time I get around to actually doing another video, it will probably be the fall. <laughs> so before I jump in, I do want to tell you a little bit about this company. It is important to me who I'm buying from. I like to know the people behind the companies. This is a US-based company. The CEO and founder, Ken, started this company in 2017. So it has been around for six years. That just means to me that for six years, he has really learned a lot about what changes need to be made. He did mention to me in his email that they are currently working on having all of their kits produced in the USA. What I thought was interesting in his story was that he was from a little tiny town in Missouri, which was funny because so was my father. And I also thought that it was very fascinating that he was a combat veteran. He is the father of two sons. And I just loved that about him. My father was also military. My husband, and I can't say was a Marine because you know, once a Marine, always a Marine. All these things were really just very interesting to me to learn about Ken. One of the most important things to me is that he uses artists who are compensated for their work. You can see this piece right here is by Abraham Hunter and he gets commission for his artwork. There are nine licensed artists. I will have a coupon for the website in the description below. So make sure you look for that. They do have an online store in addition to some of the kits that they have on Amazon. So I will put all of that information in the description box below. So make sure you check for that. I will earn a small commission off of the purchases you make from the links that I'm going to provide you. So of course, I always appreciate you purchasing from those links because that is how I'm able to bring you the videos that I bring you here on YouTube. They also have the rolled canvas kits in the 16 by 20, but they don't have the 12 by 16 size in a rolled canvas. They only have those framed at this time is what he was telling me. So I'm going to jump in. I'm going to get all the contents out. I'll be right back and we're going to take a look at this beautiful kit from Ledge Bay. Okay, you guys, look at this kit. I opened up the paints from their vacuum seal and I swatched them, sneak peek, and that way I had that ready when we get to that. So we have our instructions and I mean complete instructions printed for you for anybody who is new to paint by numbers. This is invaluable information as you know. We're going to have our reference guide and this is another invaluable piece of information. Do you see what I see? And you know I do want to burst into a Christmas song right now but it's June and I'll refrain. Nobody wants to hear that anyway. We'll keep your ear holes intact. I didn't open this yet. You can see it's you know going to be shiny, but they've given us an easel. An easel, you guys. An easel. These kind of things make me happy. So I don't paint on an easel because my arm is too weak and I'm lazy, but I want to display things on an easel. I don't necessarily want to hang everything on my wall, but I like having things up on an easel and I love this. I absolutely love this. They've given us this. So you can use this to paint your painting on. Put it on here, use it to prop it up and paint if you would like. 
or just use it as a display tool. Love it. Why can't you paint this with your excess paint? If you have leftover paint, paint it. Make it beautiful. Make it match your decor. But it's included. Hello, Ledge Bay. You smart cookies, you. All right, let's look at the rest. How beautiful are these handles? How well done are these beautiful handles? You guys know how I am about my brushes now. And everybody's sizes of brushes are different. So people will say, you know, your brushes are different sizes than everybody else's. For example, so, mine's stained. Um, so this is a size two in my line of brushes. That's a size one for them. And this is my size zero. So everybody's are different, every brand. But the point is, these are beautiful. Now he did send me a beautiful set of brushes that I have not opened yet. We might actually use it when I paint this. We will see. We have our photo reference, always important because it gives us our visual for what our painting should look like as we work. We have our thank you card from Ken himself, which is lovely, love that. I need to do that in my packages, but nobody would probably read it. They'd be like, Melanie, sorry, who gives? Poo poo magoo. But I thought his story was fascinating. All right, and then we have our paints. Now, this kit has 24 colors. It also has an additional number 15 because there's a lot of this gray in here. And let's take a look at the consistency of the paints really quickly. It's a creamy paint because I've swatched them already. I've already peeked at them. Let me take a stirring tool, which I have handy because you know I'm gonna paint on this. Paints that come in a kit like this are heavy body paints. And that is the consistency, so you don't have to worry about them like spilling out of the paint pot. But nice, creamy paints. And we'll talk about the opacity in just a minute because I've swatched them already. And there are a lot of these bright, sunny yellows, as you can see. And if you notice, number 24 and number two are those gel blues that I hate so much. Those are an ultramarine type of blue. And now that I've designed my own set of paints, I will just tell you ultramarine is a pigment that is not opaque. I would probably paint that blue because they're clouds. I would probably paint those with an impasto technique. So texture, 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 it's coming out. They're fluffy, you know? So even if those are transparent, I'm gonna build those up, give them a little depth and dimension so it's not going to matter if they're opaque or not, but we're going to we're going to check that out. I'm going to show you. All right, so let's move this palette and look at this canvas, and so we can jump into the swatch and taking a look at how this surface feels and do a little painting on it. Very clear lines and numbers. They're printed with a dark gray, so they're very visible. The texture of the canvas. It feels like it's been pre-primed with a white gesso, not a clear gesso, no company pre-primes with a clear gesso. So if you guys like having it clear gessoed, you would do that yourself. No, I always do. I use the Liquitex. That's what we'll do next. I will go ahead and prep an area of this canvas to test one of these paint colors. First, let's take a look at the swatches and see which ones may or may not give us some trouble. Okay, so let's take a look at the swatch. And I'm just gonna use the paintbrush as my pointer tool. This is an ungessoed inkjet printable canvas. I'll put the link for this in the description as well. This is just what I choose to print on for videos especially. It gives me the most accurate idea of how the paints will work on the canvas itself because it is made of a canvas material. Without going through every single color individually. Let's just discuss the ones that may be semi-opaque or semi-transparent, depends on how you want to say it, or transparent. Number two is exactly like I was talking about. It's that ultramarine blue, which is a very transparent pigment, transparent to semi-transparent pigment. And it's this one right here is the one I've always called kind of a gel blue. And I will show you what I mean by that. And it's a very difficult pigment to work with. If I build that one up with an impasto, and I will show you right here, or if you use three shades of gray that I have developed, you can use that one 
with a dark gray underneath and it will be opaque in one layer. But if you use it with an impasto technique, which is just taking a load of paint on your brush and patting it down and building up the texture with it, it's opaque that way. That would be fine because you can see those clouds are very fluffy, very textured, and it's a good spot for you to be adding that depth and dimension. So let's continue. The next ones that are gonna have a little bit of transparency issue are they're gonna be semi-opaque, which are gonna be 10, 11, 13, 20, and 21. More of those pigments that are just by nature, and literally when I say nature, I mean in nature are transparent pigments or semi-transparent. Very few yellows are opaque in nature. So again, these are ones that it took me forever to make opaque in my paints, but if I want to do so just like this, I would build these up with impasto and have the same effect with those yellows. Or I can replace these paints, but I feel like this is the perfect opportunity to paint with depth and dimension. Number 22 is a deeper version. It's more of a Prussian blue, which can also be semi-opaque, which is borderline to opaque. But if you use some of my methods um, on my video about how to avoid streaky paints by you know, using a little clear gesso underneath and so on and so forth, or if you use impasto, you're not gonna have to worry about that one at all. And I did do a very quick swatch on these when I did swatch them. So keeping that in mind, I'm very happy with the swatch and the way this came out. If you aren't sure about the three shades of gray, it is a game changer. Check that video out. It will help you with every single paint kit you buy ever. So, beautiful palette, very beachy, very beautiful. All right, so let's paint a little bit on here with some gesso without gesso. I have lots of videos on gesso too. For the love of gesso and all that is holy, it is all up to you, okay? But I have a million reasons why I think it is worth the five minutes that it takes to apply to use it. All right, let's do that. I'll be right back. We'll paint a little bit on this kit and we'll be done. Okay, I'll see you back in a minute with some prepped canvas to paint. While we're waiting for the gesso to dry, I thought we'd take a look at this set of paintbrushes that Ken sent me. And right off the bat, I have to say, Ken, why you gotta make me look bad? <laughs> I love the little container and I love this little cloth that's in here. What the heck? All right, I love the idea that this is something that you can reuse over and over again, which I prefer um, because I've actually been trying to find a solution like the bamboo pads that were reusable and washable that I include in my kit. I, I have been trying to find something in my studio that I can use to replace paper towels. And, you know, there's painting cloths and stuff like that, but they're so big. So anyway, sorry, let's open the tube. You're like, shut up, Melanie. We don't need to know your business. And we have a little storage tube if we need it. And then there's the cloth. So it's like a little microfiber cloth, but it feels, yeah, that's what it is. Microfiber cloth, which I like. All right, then we have our velvet bag. Fancy schmancy. Like I said, you're making me look bad. Little drawstring bag. Y'all gonna make my nails break off that I just put on. Okay, now. I could be wrong. It's happened once or a million times before. <laughs> Unless you're my husband, then I'm always right. The spotters usually are shorter and thicker. They give you a little bit more control when you're painting. So I really like the two spotters a lot. And for anybody who's ever watched my videos, they know flats are my favorite paintbrush to paint with. And so they've given us three of the flat brushes in this set. And one of them is the same size as the one that comes in the kits, which I do like because that is a really good size. I like the fact that they're flat brushes taper in at the point. Now I haven't gotten this one wet yet. This is the same size as the one they've included in the kit. Let me go and get it wet and see if that shows you what I mean. Now you'll notice that a lot of these have the little scraggly hairs at the end that may not be cut evenly. But what you need to do, if you get 
a brush that come in and they have any little scragglies, what I do is I take my finger for support, I prop it on something stable like my desk or workspace, and then I'll take some super fine scissors. These are not super fine scissors. I usually use embroidery scissors or a pair of clean nail clippers, and I will trim off scragglies, okay? Especially with a flat brush. Now, my flat brushes, before I ship them to you over the last couple of months, I have been personally filling orders. I will check every single brush for inconsistencies before I ship it. But these, like this, are already in a package. They can't possibly do that. So there's a stray hair right here. I will make sure I pull it down all the way and trim it at the base of the ferrule. You know, once it's wet, it tapers into a nice point. Now, if I see any other little long hairs, I'll give it a haircut again and it'll be, it'll be perfect. I will be trying the flat brushes. So let's do that now. The section I'm gonna be doing and the paint I'm gonna be testing because I'm a risk taker. I throw caution to the wind and this is probably the riskiest thing I've done in about five years. <laughs> I'm gonna paint with this yellow. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna test the canvas with um, no gesso here on this part of number 21. The Art Basics Matte Clear Gesso right here in this section. And then this part has the Liquitex. I know y'all love the sound. Um, nails on the chalkboard with this section right here. So I will time lapse this part with this yellow. You know, be expecting to see that number 21 underneath. But the reason I'm testing it this way is to see if it's worth, you know, putting gesso on at all. This canvas has a very light texture to it. So if you're going to put any gesso, it's gonna just be to fill in the little white divots and also to give you just a little bit of better coverage on your paints. Now, because I said I'm gonna be painting this with texture, do I still gesso my surface? Yes, I do. Why would I do that? Because for some reason, even with an impasto technique, the clear gesso seems to still hold my paint better. It just does, like I don't know why, especially with heavy body paints, like the ones you get in these kits, it just doesn't seem to slip around and I like it better, I just do. That's a personal thing for me, but we're gonna see, we're gonna test, let's just do it.
So as you can see, the side with no gesso is a lot more transparent with just that one thin layer. The one with the Art Basics has a little smoother texture to it and it just kind of floated over the top. And the canvas texture is not as visible. And I don't know if you can really see that from there. Over here with the Liquitex textured gesso, it has way better coverage, just automatically. So let me get down here and give you a little bit of a tilted angle and see if you can see any difference that way. You might still see a little bit of drying right here where I was finishing up on the Liquitex side, but you can tell an obvious difference in the Liquitex gessoed side and the others. That is why I do this demonstration. Why not put down in five minutes a layer of Liquitex textured gesso? I use my gesso application tool and it literally takes me five minutes to apply a layer of the Liquitex clear gesso. And then the surface accepts the paint so much better. And people will talk about how it destroys their paintbrushes. And I'm like, if you take care of your paintbrushes the way I've kind of described in videos, I'm not saying you got to buy my three in one paintbrush cleaning system. I'm saying, watch my videos on how to take care of your paintbrushes. I've been using the same white paintbrushes that I opened when I first designed my first set. And you can tell this paintbrush has been loved on for a long, long time. If y'all remember the very first 10 slash zero I ever did a video on, and I said, this is my favorite paintbrush ever. This is the very first one. But that is my babe. But there, I've got the whole set. The funny part is, they're in a container. I was looking for them just now, right here beside me. They're in a container by my bed where I was painting the other day. So I'm still using them all the time. If you take care of them, we're talking about almost three years, because August, three years ago is when I invented my very first set of paintbrushes. I use Liquitex every flipping time I paint. I've never done a canvas. And I always use Liquitex clear gesso with the texture. If I can do it, you can do it. Let's paint another part of this just for fun. And let's add the impasto to it so that you can see. I'm gonna go over this yellow just so I can show you that building it up will make it more opaque. For those of you who are concerned about opacity, you can see it's no big deal. I'm gonna pull out one of my brushes. You can see how much I've loved on this one lately. Mixing my own paints has made my paintbrush handle a little bit less than beautiful. So I'm going in with my flat number two from the flat brushes. When you're doing impasto, just in case you have a question or two about this, you don't have to add flow aid or anything to your paint. You don't need it to be thinner. I take a little scoop on my paintbrush like that. And then, like I was kind of saying earlier, I just pat it into place. Now, you might see me switch to smaller brush in the little small areas. I will switch to a new mini flat size zero. I was going to say this one's probably my favorite, but the two slash zero, I mean, they're all my favorites in the flat brush set. Let's go ahead and get started.
you can see how I use the little brush around the edges and in the smaller areas and added more of that depth and dimension. And it just gave me a little bit more control. But I hope that gave you a little idea of how to get the most opacity when you aren't sure what to do and you do not want to put down 50 layers of a color and you have a lot of the bright colors like this in your paint. This is a beautiful painting and it is perfect, perfect for the impasto technique because you've got so much of this depth and dimension you can add up here in the clouds. And then when you get down in here in the waves, you're going to add some texture here and here and then we want to bring some depth to this chair and I started recording a video about impasto technique um, and I'm still working on editing that and so you guys just hang on I know my life is is crazy I promise you I'm gonna bring you back some information about the impasto technique and how to know where to add the dimension and where to add more dimension and so on and so forth so please stay tuned for that but perfect example of a not great transparency color perfectly opaque just adding a little bit of depth well everyone i hope you guys are as impressed with this ledge bay painting called be still by abraham hunter as i am and i hope you guys will check their website out because they have some beautiful painting kits i will add a promo code in the description below be sure to subscribe to my channel while you're here. Click that notification bell and you will be notified of all future videos. If you go to melaniebee.info, you will find all of the links to connect with me on all my social media. My Facebook group is there. We have over 4,000 members now who are super helpful. I have the best members on the planet, literally from all over the world. And I want to do another shout out to Julie Tannehill on my Patreon group. She's been there since I first started Patreon and she is fabulous. Thank you again for letting Ledge Bay know about me. And thank you again to Ledge Bay for the beautiful kits, the beautiful brush set. And I will be back another day with that 12 by 16 that is going to be absolutely fabulous. Can't wait to bring that back to you guys. Have a wonderful day. Thanks as always for watching and I will see you back soon.